Thanks so much, Denise. Is my sound okay? Good. Okay. All right. Um, so I hope to to not take up too much more time so that we can get to our uh, keynote speaker. Um, but Denise asked me to say a little bit about the anti-racism in our actions faculty working group, um, just just as kind of an introduction. Um, so this group of faculty and graduate students from Howard University, Bowie State University, American University, and UMBC has been meeting regularly once a month or twice a month uh, since about January 2021. And we usually have a core of about 10 to 12 folks at every meeting. We came up with a purpose to demystify, destigmatize, and magnify anti-racism and anti-racist practices through academia. And I'll give a shout out to Asohe for kind of wordsmithing that. <laughs> Um, as our title suggests, being action-based is important to this group. So in August 2021, we hosted two speakers from Palomar Community College, Hasna Sadat Ahadi and Luis Guerrero, who took us through their own practices of decolonizing pedagogy and praxis. Several members of the group were also part of the planning committee for the inclusion imperative this year, as Denise said. And we will start discussions of bell hooks book, uh, Teaching to Tra Transgress, later this month, followed by Bettina Love, We Want to Do More Than Survive. So mm -hmm. thanks to everyone for making this group such a rich forum for learning and honest conversation. So now I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker for this year's Inclusion Imperative, and I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Um, Carol Rhodes Basin has done a lot of stuff, so it's going to take a minute, but what? <laughs> but I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get through it. So, uh, a statement by a Kansas City Art Institute professor launched Carol Rhode Dyson's visual art journey. She asked the professor, "Why are black artists? I'm sorry, who are black artists, and what are they doing?" The professor replied, "You will have to find out for yourself." Since then, she has been on a path to support and amplify marginalized creative voices of color, often invisible to American culture. Shortly after this exchange, Carol Rose Dyson co-founded Euphrates Gallery in Kansas City, Missouri, with Emmanuel Cooper, Jr., exhibiting visual arts created by people of color. From there, she moved to Howard University, graduating with a BA and completing graduate studies in art history. For the next 22 years, she worked as a gallery director and educator. Now she is a curator for museums, galleries, cultural institutions, and alternative spaces in Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, Kansas City, Missouri. She has extensive experience in exhibition research and production, public program development, and performing arts interdisciplinary productions. Mm. While, st while still an undergrad at Howard University, Carol Rhodes Dyson interned in art conservation at the Williamstown Art Conservation Center in Williamstown, Massachusetts and at the Studio Museum of Harlem, New York, in conjunction with To Conserve a Legacy, an exhibition curated by Rick Powell and Jock Reynolds. The mission of the exhibition was to preserve and repair the African-American art held in the collections of five HBCUs and to introduce students of color to the interdisciplinary field of art conservation and its many opportunities. She also worked as an assistant to David Driscoll, art, artist, art historian, author, and curator, and later as a curatorial assistant to Dr. Jeff R. Donaldson for the exhibition Ethiopian Passages at the National Museum of African Art and Trans-African Art at the Orlando Museum of Art. There's more, so stay tuned. Here we go. Uh, she, <laughs> she completed an MFA in curatorial practice from Maryland Institute College of Art, Baltimore, Maryland. Her thesis exhibition, Creative Alchemy, Common Source of Art and Science, was displayed at the Howard University Interdisciplinary Research Building, IRB, and featured the work of artists in conversation with the scientific research on each floor. She also curated Surface from Under the Microscope, the Henrietta Lacks series by Jeffrey Kent. The exhibition was featured in the National Academy of Science magazine issues in the summer of 2017. In the summer of 2013, Andy Shalal, owner and founder of Busboys and Poets, engaged her to serve as the curator for his business, selecting art with messages that help inspire change. 
He has organized or co-curated more than 80 exhibitions focusing on social justice, equity, and inclusion, including migration, number Migration 61, an exhibition with the Phillips Collection designed to imagine what the 61st piece of Jacob Lawrence's migration series might look like, and Implicit Bias, an exhibition with the Joan Hisoko Smith Healing Arts Gallery that displayed images confronting bias and racism. It featured over 80 works displayed at the Smith Healing Arts Gallery in DC and throughout five busboys and poets locations. Most recently, she served as curator for the Reginald F. Lewis Museum, where she organized the exhibition, Robert Houston, Tell Our Story, featuring the work of Robert Houston and his influence on Baltimore photographers, J.M. Gordano, Devin Allen, and on DC's D. Dwyer. She served as president of Black Artists of DC from 2013 to 2017, and she currently serves as a public arts panelist for Prince George's County Arts Commission and as board member for Artomatic. Her journey to empower marginalized voices continues. So please join me in welcoming Carol and Carol Rose Dyson. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm I'm just very appreciative of being here with you and being able to share my work. Uh, the work you're doing is so very important. I'm, I'm listening to the programs and the books and I'm, it's just, uh, uh, I'm honored again to be here to share this conversation and, and to dialogue with you about how it can affect and, and enhance your work. So, um, these images in the presentations will tell stories of the human experience. Many of them are visceral and direct. Uh, as you heard, my professional and personal mission is and has been to uplift voices of marginalized community and many of their voices address the challenges, obstacles and issues they face. The marriage between busboys and me has been providence in action. It is through my work there that I have been most recognized. Most of you all recognize Busboys as a space for change, a space for art, culture, and politics to intentionally collide and inspire social change and begin to transform our community. Andy would love the comments that he's heard from you all about Busboys. Uh, he's always happy to hear how Busboys influences um, people's lives. I also spent time, as you heard, at Howard University's Interdisciplinary Research Building, and I must acknowledge the great warmth and support I received from the students, staff, and faculty there. One of the exhibitions, Science as Art, uh, which included work from the staff and faculty of the IRB, is where I met Isohe Irapur. Um, the works shown today are on themes of social justice and uh, uh, come from Busboys and also from Reginald Lewis Museum, where I recently served as curator. Uh, my process is as community curator. I'm inspired by individuals and active in the community. My research is listening to people, attending cultural events, and reading relevant books, articles, etc. And I seek diverse voices. I try to balance uh, messages with aesthetics in selecting the works and installing images. People often come to bus boys to get away from the pain in the world. Also with exhibitions, there are a series of programs for author of artist talks, which are accessible to the public. So we'll go to the next slide. Next. The intentions for this presentation is to share how art exhibitions I've curated relate to the humanities and to encourage dialogue on the symposium, how it relates and, and how this presentation relates to the symposium. Next. Uh, through art, we recognize we're able to deeply explore society's complex issues, use art to express and share stories of the human experience. You can read these, think creatively, think critically, strategically act, inspire individuals and communities and envision a new world. Next, uh, images are grouped in the following categories. Um, you'll see them as they come up. I guess you say, let's see the images, right? So let's go to the next one. 
The first one is inhabiting the planet in times of war and migration. First artist, themes of war, Ahmed Barakat. This was one of my first exhibitions at 5th and K in 2013. Ahmad Barakat was from Iraq. He is a journalist and a painter, and his work tries to close the gap between those who suffer and those who are ignorant of that suffering. I think there the comment is um, very strong. Um, next. Again, Ahmad Barakat now expressing the uh, angst, frustration, death, loss experienced in war. Next. Uh, we, this was uh, an image with uh, Antonio, Michael D'Antonio, in partnership with the Charles Krauss Political Art Gallery. This was at 5th and K at Bus Boys, and it was a conversation on, uh, on war as well. And D'Antonio's piece, again, uh, his work shows the corporations, the corporations of America that survive and thrive off of the death, of death and loss of, of, of people, young people in, in our country. Charles Krauss was the, uh, the uh, Washington Post reporter who was at Jonestown. I mean, that really goes back, right? The Jonestown massacre. Mm -hmm. He was the uh, uh, reporter that survived standing next to the congressman who got killed. Uh, let's go next. Chalky Friend, We the People series. It's a work of about 84 artworks where he really talks about and illustrates the decline of people's rights due to the dark money infused in our political system and campaign laws. Uh, we'll see another one of his pieces that's in the We the People series as well. Uh, the, the Constitution is in the background of each one of these images. Next. What are the words used to describe the anguish of war? It's very, very difficult to find them, but these images translate these emotions. And often because of war and famine, pe people migrate and immigrate to other parts of the world. Next. Migration and immigrant experience. Next. <sighs> you know, these, these, uh, you know, the backstory, all of these works and organizing these exhibitions take me to uh, a, a, a another place in the emotions of that time. Uh, Susan Rosenbaum, who's a consultant and professor at American University in the Department of Education, is the daughter of Benjamin Abramowitz. And she approached us with about 200 of the prints that her father created in 1943. We decided to select, uh, selected about six of those, and Michael Platt, extraordinary printer, ex printer extraordinary master printer, who's no longer with us, is deceased, created these images, which you'll see in just a moment. So these images were printed for an exhibition. It was called Seeking Sanctuary, and we have the first one, Exodus. We'll go to the next one. Uh, this is, um, again, They Will Be Brave. Next one. This is the Seeking Sanctuary about immigration again and change. And this next one. Next. Mob hysteria. And then the next one. This is what they look like at 14th and B. They were huge mural-like images that you, that were in your face in your face when you came into the uh, space at 14th and B, recognizing the change, recognizing the devastation and disenfranchisement, the one piece of luggage that people took that to, to, to take to the next place. I mean, one piece of luggage that you take from one life to the next. Next. Continuing in the vein of the migration series, we must boys collaborated with the Phillips collection on what would the 61st piece of Jacob Lawrence migration series look like today. It's next. 
we see one of the images of Jacob Lawrence's 60 pieces, 30 of them were at MoMA and 30 of them at the Phillips Collection. And they were brought together, I believe, I didn't put the date down, in 2018, 2017, 2018. Uh, and that's when we, uh, coordinated, we, we did our exhibition. So you see migrants arrived in great numbers, panel 40 out of 60. Next. So artists in the community did their responses and it's hashtag migration 61, where artists provided what their thoughts were. And this was on, on what the migration series would look like today. And David Amoroso of Arlington, Virginia submitted several on the illegal alien series. What does illegal mean? Next, we have Helen Zugabe who submitted for hashtag migration 61, her serious Syrian migration series of leaving home, saying goodbye, coming to America and the spoils of war. Uh, we'll see more work by Helen Zugabe in this presentation as well. Next, we have Manaz Weldy, uh, whose door to the unknown, uh, while, while there's a, a bright light uh, behind it is still that unknown space. Uh, I also recognize that architecturally in Northern Africa, a number of doors look like this entryways to houses, entryway to other space, other spaces. So she brought her this culture. She was making a comment about, you know, change and transformation and but the light that is behind the potential light that is behind it. Next. Again, who tells the stories of disenfranchisement, the freer, the anger, the change. It is in the art and in the written and spoken word. Next. Mmm. Race, gender, and identity. How are we doing on time? I have about 10 more minutes. Yes? Okay, next. In race, gender, and identity, we card we partnership with Joan Hisoka Healing Arts Gallery, Smith Center in Washington, D.C. for uh, conversations on race. Next, this is a hoodie, and I uh, it, it and that's the whole idea of of implicit bias. What you bring to it, it's just an ordinary hoodie, but so much is brought to it in terms of fear and uh, uh, class issues. And it's just a hoodie, it's something there that's supposed to keep you warm. But we all know the story of Trayvon Martin and the hoodie and the Skittles. But this was uh, a hoodie and it was placed at Sherlington. And I did get a complaint about it, which I responded to, it's just a hoodie. You know, it's just a hoodie. Next. Now, Manuel Palacio put everything on the, on the he, he shared everything. Again, the Constitution of the United States, we're founded in terms of the equality of all people, but you see the multiple levels, the United States, the Black woman, the Statue of Liberty, uh, all of this, multiple layers of commentary about racism, about equality, about uh, uh, so many things here and inequality in the United States of America. Next. Uh, again, in this implicit bias exhibition, we had two artists, Raphael and Hebron Chantism, who also brought their commentary about racism in America, the, the soldier that comes back home again to lack, poverty, disenfranchisement, and Hebron Chisholm, who has the black man and the noose and justice, or is it? Next, next slide, Helen Zugrave. Uh, there's humor in her work. And here she, in the, the uh, images, implicit bias too, she shares 
her uh, Arabic background. Again, the Arabic woman looking in the mirror and who does she see? Who does she feel she is? Uh, in addition to the image, have a Coke with Yasir, the third image, uh, the American Gothic has now been replaced by an Arab family, a Middle Eastern family, um, the wife and uh, husband that are now, you know, farming or just are a part of the American Gothic. And that last little image that you really can't see, which is one of my favorite pieces, is the woman with the hijab. And there's a teeny tiny little American flag on the hijab. Uh, you can hardly see it, but I assure you it's there. And I think that is a very interesting image, the hijab with the American flag. Next. We go to women in art. Next. At our location, we had Samira Paz, who infused or replaced women in a number of African American cultural um, uh, events. In the recreation of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., she infused, she added women uh, to that story. Next, Rachel Cross with her fierce African goddess swimming to the surface. Next, Marie Emerson, Hierarchy of Needs, Women in Art. Next, uh, Marie, Marilee Mahoika. Marilee is Afro-Latina and she did, I, I used yellow skirt. This is about what black women in, with their culture that is still infused in the business and professional world. Next. LGBTQ community. Next. Currently on view and the Baltimore busboys and poets. I have the work of Shavilla Rashim, whose work is um, quite, um, excuse me, there's a question. What was the question? Keep going. Okay. Shavilla Rashim, whose work is essay is at, at busboys and poets in Baltimore talking about queer religion, one and two, self-love. Well, second one is self-love. Let's do the third one. This is um, the next one, Shavila Rashim Retouch 2, where she's also having a conversation about transgender uh, in art. Next, Chalky Friend, a friend again, We the People series and their interference. The government sometimes interference in same sex marriages and same sex couples. Next. Oh, yes, we've touched on mental health and self care as well. Next, we had a wonderful young lady, Deja Green, very courageous, that shared her story. Next of health, her mental health, where she um, had hopelessness and loneliness. She was uh, next. This is a picture of her and she talks about how she would be very, very fatigued, but she used their, her plants next. And she sometimes would do alcohol as well next and uh, writing journals and painting and her dog. There were so many things that she used to balance her, her mental health challenge. Um, she eventually got on medication and is pretty much, and is doing very well now, a, is doing much, much, much better. And did this presentation at a place called Sanctuaries that was for millennials where they did art in the community. Next, we are coming in the last round now, coming down down the down the stretch. Social justice from Black Power to Black Lives Matter. Next, these are images that I organized in the exhibition of um, Tell Our Story. Robert Houston was a a Baltimorean who was influenced by Gordon Parks, who used photography as a tool to document as well as uplift the story and tell the story to infuse, to inform a larger community of what black people 
the, their their lives it was like this first one is one of my favorite it's called coach the story of life the story of living next to it i put a, a image of a baby so we see the cycle of life the teaching the connection and uh I, and i wanted to ground each of the works by each of the artists in their sense of community because they're all infused with a love and a support and an uplifting of their community, as well as telling the stories about uh, social change. Uh, the next, the second picture you see is the Poor People's Campaign that he documented. Uh, I, I don't know if any of you may remember that in 1963, 43 days out of the 60 some days that the Poor People's Campaign Resurrection City was on the mall, it rained, it was soaking, it was miserable. But these individuals came together to to be visible about the, the plight of poor people, the lack of health care, the lack of jobs, you know, the crime. They were bringing, uh, 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 again, visibility for change, for the Congress to see to make change. Let's go next. The, these are the images of Devin Allen also, who was heavily influenced by uh, 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 Robert Houston. Again, to tell the story, to infuse a love of community. But Devin, yes, he loves his community, but not only does he take pictures of the work, but you can hear, and, and, <clears throat> you can hear what's going on, especially in that first image uh, of the Baltimore uprising. And then again, the questioning, a am I next? You know, am I next? Next slide. D. Dwyer from D.C., Southeast D.C., she again loves her community. And we have Gangsta here on the left, an older gentleman with his uh, shirt on and his dog and his black and miles enjoying his afternoon. And we have the young ladies uh, at, at the protest, so young girls. I think you can find that little diamond, little bag at Miss Kitty or little stores, Claire, you know, so many little girls have that. And so then there they were at the Black Lives Matter protest. Next, speaking of Southeast DC, I wanted to show you the image of the bus boys and poets at Anacostia. This was my second exhibition there. And again, you see a wide variety of work by African-American artists from the, the refurbished branches out of the Anacostia River, left to right to images of women, continuing over the images by Xavier Hardison about is African-American a, a prophet or a nuisance? And, and the, then continuing over, we see the noose which is a story about a black woman that was hung, uh, lynched in, in Virginia. Next slide. Even with all the challenges in the world, there is still love. The last, next image. This was an exhibition that I curated because I got tired. I got tired of all the, the angst and the I said, we got to find something positive. I got to give people something positive to hold on to. So I did the exhibition uh, on love. I, I did a call and got these photographs by Ashley Tillery. And again, on love, the next one. Again, on love, and she numbered these one, two, three, four to 24. She didn't give them a title except one, two, three, four. And then Next, how can the visual art make visible the topics that you as humanity scholars? Well, one of the things I'm going to also provide a list of the artists that you can contact uh, it, should you wish to follow up on perhaps talking about their work or talking to you. And we're also getting ready to do a newsletter uh, on art and social justice. So, you know, also, yeah, and, and, and projects, you know, we should talk about some projects because bus boys uh we're moving into some very interesting areas there may be some things that we could do you know down the road so well let's 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 keep talking right let's keep talking
So on the last slide is my information. Uh, if you would like to contact me further to have a discussion, what have, what have you, that's how you can reach me. Okay, are there any questions? No questions? That was fantastic. So, hey, are you going to um, moderate the questions and answers? Uh, yes, I wanted to make sure that anyone who was here who wanted to ask their own question can do so, but we do have a question in the chat, ironically from Denise. So, um, Ms. Dyson, can you tell us a bit about the programs that you've been a part of to engage people in conversations inspired by these works of art? Uh, we've done, we did artist talks at one, one time um, before the pandemic. And after the pandemic, we started doing programs called Art on the Line. And those were uh, conversations with the artists. And we had, um, um, we had a good following uh, in those conversations and um, I'm looking forward to beginning conversations again and the newsletter starting in the starting this summer at Bus Boys. Is that, is, but, but yes, yeah, so the conversations we've had and, and looking forward to programs. I know Andy has also done symposiums especially on immigration. And there have been symposiums on, uh, on politics. Um, and, you know, and, and Andy also has a number of speakers that come in and talk about uh, uh, social justice. So that is, uh, Andy was brought up in Iraq and his family was, and his father was a diplomat, yes. But the, uh, the life as a young child they were in a compound. There was bombings. Uh, there was unrest constantly. One of his uncles got dragged in the uh, uh, on the street. So he he was brought up um, wanting to make a difference. So that is also how Bus Boys and Poets was came about was because of this desire, this um, need for making change because of what he had experienced as a young man as a young boy. Thank you so much for that answer. We have another um, you know, sort of question about what you've noticed as the curator of Busboys and Poets. So the, the uh, Denise wanted to know, and I'm also interested in this question, if there's a difference in the kind of art that's displayed across the different neighborhoods. Do you find that art in certain neighborhoods leans more towards one direction or another? I know yes. there are many different um, yes. busboys and poets across the DMV region. Yes, yes, good question. Uh, yes, and that I recognize in Tacoma, it's more liberal, and I also do a number of my um, uh, international exhibitions out of Tacoma because there's a very, uh, a very more open community. And as in Virginia, I find that to be my most conservative. And sometimes I still do things that will cause controversy. As I said, the, um, uh, I, had, I put the um, hoodie there and it did, it did get um, a, a complaint. And then also at 450K, that's where the lobbyists are. And I must tell you, if if the the former administration, we had a number of images about the former president there, and his daughter lived nearby and walked in and saw these caricatures, and we really got some heat, but I, we didn't take the caricatures down, um, and we continue to display the uh, caricatures uh, commentary about the former president and uh, uh, so sometimes also politically, I'll put a number of political things at 450K. So yes, I do. And then in Anacostia, you know, I really try to do a diverse uh, um, aspects, but there's so much wonderful talent. I was so blown away. That was why I had to put that, that spot that about um, um, 
in Anacostia to show that range of work because 90% of that art was from artists that lived in Anacostia. You know, it wasn't citywide. It was the art, the wonderful work that was done by artists from Anacostia. That's wonderful. And it's very interesting to hear echoed again in your words that art requires bravery. It's not just something that is always accepted. And speaking of bravery, another type of bravery that's you know, exhibited in professionals are those that teach young people in school. So do yes. you ever work with younger folks on art education? Do you enter into the schools at all with your work in Busboys and Poets or elsewhere? Uh, often uh, what I do is, is I put up the art stu students' artwork. I was just in a school a couple of days ago, Mid McFarland Middle School, uh, because there is an Arabic teacher who has done these alphabets that are just really beautiful and some of the calligraphy. So I often work with students. Do I go into the schools? Um, sure, I used to more often. And uh, I'm very much, I am, I'm very much open. You know, I wanna share what I know. I wanna share what I do. I wanna share the story. So yes, I'm, yes, how can I serve, you know? That's amazing. So we have time for maybe one more question if anyone has one. And then we'll be able to wind down to get ready for our next section. Oh, okay, Bev, you have a question. You can unmute if you like. Otherwise you can write it here in the chat and I'll read it for you. I don't have a question, but there okay. is something in the chat though. Okay. Okay. Um, I did take a look over here and I asked the last question that was seen here. Now, a couple of things that I want to point out. As was mentioned earlier, we have evaluations. We'd love for you to fill those out. Please do. We also have in the chat several links that you can take a look at to see where you would like to go next because we're about to go into some of our other sessions. Now there is going to be a session that happens here in this room. This is Courtney Hobson's uh, WebEx room. There'll be one that's happening here, but there are also other ones subsequently in other WebEx rooms that you'll be able to have access to if you follow the links in the chat. We want to thank you. Can I answer that one last question? How do mm -hmm. I speak my own self-care? The work is the healing. You know, the, I, the work, the multiple, the works that come in to Bus Boys and Ports that I see on, on a constant basis, they're, they're you know, they're, many of them are just really beautiful. And I am just so appreciative of the talent. So my self-care is, is seeing the work, doing the work, but yeah, I take time off and watch Netflix, <laughs> spend time with my grandkids, you know, so, you know, that's my self-care. Thank you so much, Ms. Carol Rhodes Dyson for sharing you, so, so your hey. story and your work with us. It's been an excellent presentation and I hope everyone enjoyed this at least as much as I did. Good, well, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. <laughs>